Live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Okay, welcome back to theCUBE live here in San Francisco for VMworld 2019. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante for CUBE coverage live. We're here with Michael Dell, founder and CEO of Dell Technologies. CUBE alum, great to see you. Great um, to be back with you guys. Thank you guys for all the great coverage here at VMworld. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming on. And, and being here. I know you're super busy, you got a lot of time. So I'll just get right to it. You're not on stage, you haven't been involved in the keynote. It's been pretty much a VMware show, but Pivotal being bought by VMware, big news, Carbon Black, those were the acquisitions coming in that got everyone a buzz. But there's a lot of technical integrations going on with VMware, as Dave called it once, the crown jewel for you. I what's agree. going on? I mean, you know, I mean, what's inside your head right now? Share what's going on. What's on the chessboard? Well, you know, if we step back to 2015 when we announced the combination and fast forward today to 2019, we're really delighted with, you know, the progress and, you know, how we've been able to bring the Dell Technologies family together, the great progress and innovation going on here at VMworld. You know, you see it on stage and you know, more today as, as well. Integrating Kubernetes right inside of vSphere, you know, that's super important. Obviously bringing together the, the developer and the infrastructure you know, with build, run, manage, connect and protect. All the progress we're making at the network layer with NSX, uh, with security, with Carbon Black, and all things Dell are, are powered by VMware, so, right? so our, our Dell Technologies cloud vision, the multi-cloud vision, again, think about it from the perspective of the customer. We always start with the customer. The customer is looking for a developer-centric environment that is location agnostic, right? And they don't want to get locked in. And when you think about it, you know, computing, increasingly it's highly distributed. Right, you've got edge, you've got all sorts of clouds, you've got software as a service, and how do you seamlessly move things around? And VMware Cloud Foundation is the perfect substrate, yeah. right, to be able to manage in that you know, I want to get into that future Pete, world. I want to get into the whole um, disparate parts coming together. You guys are pulling a lot together with Dell Technologies. But first I want to say that this is our 10th year covering VMworld. It's our 10th year. Congratulations, uh, thank you. This is the last show standing, because the first show we did was EMC World, which you bought. So that's technically <laughs> part of Dell Technologies. We've been covering theCUBE, and when we first met it's you. Still you, there, it's, you, it's, it's just, it's now it, even bigger. It's even bigger. When we first met you, you were a public company, and I remember we had conversations around going private, some of the things that you saw and you wanted to do, you're doing them. So we're now five, six years into that. Um, you've been number one in a lot of categories. You'd like to talk about, we're number one in servers, we're number one in storage. You've been number one in a lot of those things that you used to compete in, still, still do. Now the game has changed. The platform of cloud is certainly there. You're bringing all these piece parts together. Not easy, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's, it's, you look at it, it looks obvious on the surface, but it's not obvious putting it together. This is kind of what's happening right now. This seems to be the top story for Dell Technologies. You're bringing the collection of Dell plus VMware and new stuff into the fold. Is that the right kind of way to categorize it? You know, I think if you, if you look at it as a trajectory, it's, it's all very clear and it's not really that different from the vision that we laid out in 2015 and, and 2016. And certainly we were given an incredible opportunity to be able to bring you know, EMC and VMware into the, into the Dell Tech family along with Pivotal and, and you know, it's resonated with customers. We've had incredible revenue synergies and uh, I couldn't be more excited about the level of innovation that we're, we're driving and the feedback we're getting from customers continues to be quite positive. And, and you know, what I see out there, you know, looking out you know, five years, 10 years, is this boom in edge computing. And I think there again, it plays to our strengths and how do we enable this digital future for our customers, you know, and to be able to unleash all this data to enable 
you know, humanity. And, and that's, uh, that's, that's why we built this company. So as it relates to the edge, and, and one of the areas you're not number one in, one of the few is, is public cloud. So you're kind of redefining the notion of cloud with multi-cloud. So I wonder how you think about uh, that opportunity. You, you've known for go big or go home. Um, you like big markets. Um, how do you look at the total market for multi-cloud and edge and as it relates to sort of the existing on-prem business, the public cloud growth that you're seeing? What do you see for that multi-cloud slash edge new cloud opportunity? Well, since we're here at VMworld, right, v, you know, VMworld has about 70 million workloads. I think it's actually bigger than the public cloud, right? You correct me if I'm wrong, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, look, on-prem's way bigger than the, the public cloud, right? No question. Exactly, and, and, and what's happening, of course, is the line. growing faster, sorry, the, but it's, the, but it's the much The line is blurring yeah. between, you know, what's a public cloud, what's a you know, hybrid cloud, multi-cloud, edge. And so, look, our opportunity is to really make all that go away for customers and allow them to choose and express our unique value add in whatever form the customer wants to use it. So you've seen us align with all the public clouds. You know, you're seeing us take steps in the edge. We're continuing to improve the on-premise systems. You know, with Project Dimension, now it's the VMware cloud on Dell EMC that we're managing for you. And it's on demand, it's consumption, and it's consumed just like a public cloud. So I mean, I would, I'm on the numbers there. Just it's, all, to it's all coming together and you know, who, who's, who's got a better capability or position than we have. Well, this is what I was getting at with about the piece parts being put together, bringing the spare parts, because I would agree that the on-premise is bigger than the public cloud, but you know, it's like, it's a declining old technology that's being refreshed, so you have the customers looking at, you know, that's why containers are popular, you can put containers around legacy, but those technologies have to transform into new ones. This is the cloud platform, I think, opportunity, and so you guys now have VMware Cloud on Dell EMC, which is, what looks like it's a managed service for the on-prem as a kind of a starting point to kind of replatform IT or the enterprise, because, yeah, it's a big market that's declining or transforming. The spend's there, but it might not be the same as it was before. You know what I'm saying? So that's kind of where we see that. Your thoughts on, on that dynamic? Customers don't want to be locked into a particular way of doing things. And if you think about workloads and containers and you know, where these things will reside, one thing we know is it'll change over time, right? <laughs> and new requirements, security, regulation, performance, cost, et cetera. We see things moving back and forth, and I maintain that you know, when, when, we're, when we're here on theCUBE, you know, at, at the 15-year the anniversary, or the 20-year anniversary, we'll be talking about the edge being bigger than all the clouds combined. Yeah, I like that edge story. One of the things I want to get thoughts on, you said on theCUBE last year, data tsunami. You've always been pro-data, that the data piece is a critical aspect of this new equation. There seems to be a, a competitive battle for what I call the control plane of data. That's my words, no one's really written that up yet, but data is a strategic asset when you're dealing with applications, whether it's you know, cloud native and or on-premise using microservices, but edge, certainly data is a critical thing too. Do you move compute to the edge? Do you have data at the edge? So data is a critical ingredient in all this. What's up in your update in your mind in terms of how that's changed or is it still the same course? What's the, what's the current vision of the data role? I think it is the critical ingredient. I mean, it's sort of the plot, right? <laughs> and and uh, when, you, when you think about you know, neural networks and machine learning and AI and all those great tools, they're nothing without the data. And we're just at the beginning, uh, you know, uh, we're, we're in the pre-game show of 5G. And we have an increasingly intelligent and connected world and so, you know, if you think you have a lot of data now, and five years from now you have a thousand times more, and so we're building out this infrastructure to enable, you know, humanity to really bring value from that data. Michael, when you bought EMC, I was having a conversation with the, one of your CEOs or one of your competitors, and that individual said that, well, Dell's not going to be able to buy companies anymore because all this debt 
And I said, well, what about <laughs> VMware? And how about, how about 40 companies yeah. in the last four so, or five years? There so you go. My, <laughs> my question to you is around M&A, um, you obviously, as, as Dell, you bought a lot of companies, you know, Joe Tucci before you bought a lot of companies. Now you and Pat are buying a lot of companies. You've learned a lot about, about M&A. What do you look for? And in, in what have you learned? What do you look for? I'm sure you've made some mistakes along the way, but um, what do you look for in m and I mean, what, what's the secret sauce as to how you're successful in M&A? Well, what we don't do is, is wake up in the morning and say, let's go find a company to buy, okay? We, we, we actually start with the strategy, right, <laughs> of, of the company and what are we trying to accomplish and what is the, uh, strategic intent and the problems that we're trying to solve on behalf of our customers. And there are many ways to do that, right? We have organic innovation, uh, you know, the, the list of the top, uh, you know, patent uh, holders and producers just came out for 2018. We were, you know, ranked number 12 of all companies in the entire world. That's pretty good, you know, you know up, from, up from number 18 the year before. You know, we were a couple of patents behind Apple and, you know, we're, 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 our organic innovation engine is very, very strong. Then we have partnerships, right? We're not going to do everything ourselves, right? You look out there at the expo, you see every company in the industry is part of the VMware ecosystem. Love it. Fantastic, right? Then we have investments. We have our Dell Technologies Capital, and we're continuing to make investments. We're going to announce another one here. They'll probably get your attention, you know, in, in the in the in the compute space, in the AI space, uh, and we continue to, you know, sort of shoot ahead, uh, you know, three to five years into the future with these new investments, and 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 then of course. Uh, acquisitions are also a tool to accelerate. And if you think about how we build NSX and adding new capabilities into the software-defined network, which I continue to believe is an enormous opportunity that we're incredibly well positioned for. So we have a platform to add new capabilities, but uh, you know, acquisitions are just one of the so vectors. So that's on the strategy. Well, and you also have some dry powder, if I may, and, uh, and it relates to this, that you haven't really pulled the trigger on yet, which is Dell Boomi, SecureWorks, and RSA. I mean, these are assets that, you know, it's not exactly clear where they fit in the whole family. You could, you have a lot of options there. I don't know what you can share you about correct. those, but. We, 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 do, we do have <laughs> a lot of options, and, and we have some great assets that continue to grow. You know, Boomi continues to, uh, boom along and 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 uh, you know adding thousands of customers and you know continues to be you know quite well adopted. But you know here here at VMworld, super excited about the ability to bring together Kubernetes and Pivotal and VMware all together. You know I think you know if you look at the the endpoint business. Uh, on a revenue basis, nobody has a bigger endpoint business than Dell Technologies, right? <laughs> and, and uh, you know, with what we're doing with Workspace ONE, which was already having great momentum, and now with Carbon Black, the ability to secure those endpoints, which are, you know, uh, increasingly very diverse, as we were talking about before, you know, our capabilities continue to expand. You guys done a great job. I mean, um, David and I were commenting, the shareholder value, stakeholder value, both, both shareholder and stakeholder that you've done, went private, then went public, all this uh, financial success, congratulations. But I want to talk about Pat Gelsinger and VMware because we were commenting during the vCloud Air transition um, before the, the Amazon relationship where, you know, Pat saw the wave, he's like, look, we got to go and make a decision, clean this mess up. I think that was one of his exact words, but some along those lines. They made it, the team looked at Amazon, partnered with Amazon. Since then, the VMware stock price, shareholder value, stake a little bit went up. So, you know, all good moves around, so, you know, props to everyone. But the whole tech for good thing is now part of it. I want to get your thoughts on this because this backlash against um, tech these days, right? And um, I thought Pat's keynote yesterday was clever to point that out, that it's a neutral opportunity to shape it. 
This is now a big part of, it's not window dressing anymore. This isn't about just throw some niches out there. This is part of corporate culture that is directly relevant to some of the political wins happening. Your thoughts on balancing and shaping tech for good and leveraging the financial success, be stakeholder success, not just shareholder. Your thoughts? Right, well first of all, I think the biggest thing that we can do is to you, you know, use all this data to enable humanity in a positive way, right? And that's sort of our, our you know, core mission as a company and what, you know, and what we do. I think as Pat correctly pointed out, you know, AI doesn't wake up in the morning and say, today I'm going to be bad or today I'm going to be good. It's what, what do we as humans ask these things to do? And, you know, storytellers are good at scaring people, right? And as long as there have been, you know, humans telling stories to each other, we've been fearful of new things, right? <laughs> and, and, uh, but, but the reality is that the vast majority of technology is used for good. I do think there are some companies in, in today's world that have been looking the other way because they've been minting money you know, we know who they uh, are. <laughs> you know, uh, by using customers' data and you know they're exploiting their their privacy in a way that is not good, and you know I think they're going to be subject to regulation and you know the the, the rules will change. Uh, you know, uh, we're not one of those, right? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and, Facebook, and, but I mean, so if I may, I mean, look, the tech industry. I mean, yes, there's some examples, but the tech industry in general has has, I think, got a bad rap. I mean, and, and and I like, I'm glad that people like yourselves and leaders like yourselves are, sort of saying, hey, we actually are doing good. Here's some examples and really leaning into that because, um, I, I would say, on balance, the contribution to society of tech has far outweighed the negative. Would, and and, and look, agree, the, the way we've always approached this is is to say, you know, what do, you know, what is the best possible thing that we could be doing here and. You know, if, if we're waiting for a regulator to show up and tell us that we did it wrong, that's completely the wrong answer, yeah, yeah. right? So if, if you look at, for example, in our sustainability and you know, in the, the environment, we're, we're way, way ahead of any rules or think, you know, we're proactively thinking about how do we dramatically improve our footprint and you know, the, the, yeah. the, the materials and the energy consumption. And certainly we have legions of stories about how technology in genomics research and disaster recovery in, you know, uh, imaging to, you know, under, understand, you know, what's going on, you know, across the globe is having an enormous positive difference. One of the things you mentioned about the Facebook example, actually, I, you didn't actually say Facebook, but it pretty much was Facebook, um, was it was weaponized and there was some digital damage and some collateral damage. But when you talk about edge computing, one of the national defense security concerns is when it's not just malware attacks we're worried about to steal credit cards, there's takeover of actually machines, right? So the industrial IOT piece of it, there's a lot of concerns around the role of um, leaders like yourself and companies around national defense because with the ransomware, 13 cities hit, was that cyber, was that intentional, was that just you know, blackmail? We don't know, I mean, you take over a, a self-driving car and you can make it do something. That's lives are now in danger, not just credit card data. So the whole discussion around cyber uh, defense becomes now uh, a topic that politicians are not really that qualified to address right now and well, the role it's, of the art industry is changing. Yeah, it's something we spend a lot of time on and obviously with RSA and SecureWorks and the intrinsic security that we build into our software and hardware infrastructure solutions, we spend a lot of time on this. You're absolutely right, as everything becomes intelligent and connected, the attack surface and the vulnerabilities also become much, much larger. So we have a real responsibility, not only in securing our supply chain, but in securing all of those you know, devices and, <laughs> and, uh, and virtual machines and containers that are out there running the infrastructure of the world. I mean, we have yeah. about half of the, of the world's mission critical you know, organizations right, are, are running their most important things 
yeah. on Dell Technologies. It's great that you've been proactive on the having good judgment as a corporate citizen. I think that's a, a great leadership. Congratulations, that's something that everyone should emulate. My final question for you is, what are you excited about right now? I mean, a lot going on. Um, you got a spring to your step. VMware stock is you know, still at a high, even a little dip here with uh, some of the uh, political landscape going on, but still a lot of integration. New tech's happening, you got Kubernetes. You got a lot more on top of that with microservices. You got 5G, as you mentioned, it's pre-gaming right now, but a lot of other stuff's going on. What are you most excited about? Well, you, you rattled off uh, <laughs> several of them. I think, uh, you know, on pick, pick your favorite. The, the stage <laughs> with uh, Ray O'Farrell and Greg Lavender, they had a kind of landscape there of 21 new technologies that are super interesting. I could, I could geek out and get excited about any, any, in, any one of those. <laughs> You know, look, I, I, I. Hey, hey guys, it's my turn. Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> hey. Yeah, you, know, it's, you know, you ran over here. My turn. Okay. So the All right. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Did you do okay? I did good. He's doing good. Great. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. <laughs> sure thing. Okay. We're ready to let you take over. All right. Come on in. Mike him up. I think he's got to go. Oh, yep. Michael's yeah. got to go? Okay, well okay. Pat's, Pat's on deck here. I'm he saying 5G. To, Pat Very wants to get in the batter's 5G. box here. He wants to get into the game. 5G Michael, data explosion. Michael, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Really Absolutely. appreciate it. We're back with Pat Gelsinger, who's on set right now, ready to go. We'll be right back.